right, let's hear Brother Benjamin's. Can we see it okay, everybody? Big enough for our shapes and everything? All right, let's check it out. What do you guys think? I'm sorry, I, sh I shouldn't have commented yet. What do you guys think? <laughs> I think it sounds great rhythmically. I think it, the music sounds really good. Anybody else? Did you change it um, in the chaos rushed over me part? Benjamin? From uh, past drafts. You mean the words or the music? The music. I don't think so. Okay. It was just my I imagination. Like I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, so it might sound different with, um, what do you call it? With, um, with uh, the, the harmony, right? So we heard it before. And remember the last time we heard, um, so... We've gone through the steps and we, we went through the, the class of learning how to write the melody. And then our next step was putting the bass, right? So that we can hear uh, basically what everything's gonna be based on. And then now we're filling in the tenor and the, the alto according to the chords that we've learned. And it's great. You know, I don't remember if I asked you, Brother Benjamin, about your musical background. There are some things in here that are that are musical, like this chord. And so we'll get into that stuff later. But I was just curious where that came from. Does that come from him experience? The way it sounds sounded good. Just curious. I put the fa there because it sounded cool. Uh -huh. And then I used one of the other chords that was minor because it sounded cool. But oh. I can't say that I really know much beyond that. <laughs> oh, well, that, oh, that's great. So. Yeah, we will we'll talk about some of these chords, but yes, that that is one of those minor chords, uh, but sounds major because of what's on the bottom. And we'll talk about that a little bit, but yeah, perfect. It fits perfectly. And so my guess is <clears throat> what happens there is a combination of um, what you've you've seen from the class as far as like what chords we're supposed to use, what sounds good. And then you probably had some things in your head like this sounds right, right? Like I, because we have the blessing, you know, of uh, most of us, maybe all of our lives having heard songs, right? Uh, uh, Christian songs like this. And then even if not, even if you've been around, you know, for several years, you start to hear a lot of things that are, that are very similar. So anyway, great job, great job um we're getting to the point where we're going to start learning more advanced things and basically just what i call getting a little picky and by by picky i don't mean you know destroying everything but um learning how to write like the very best way little things because in general when you heard that how did it sound i mean to me it sounded really great they're very small things that i would fix and there's a couple reasons for the things. And one of the reasons is, well, let me just pull up one other song and hopefully we'll get back here before uh, Benjamin has to go. I have a hard time scrolling through MuseScore. I don't know, they don't give me like a choice to scroll through a window. So let me look for the song I'm looking for. Yeah, this one, okay. Um, Sister Uriel song, right? Hello. All right. So let's let's listen to this one, at least the beginning. And I remember we talked about we we're going to change some things as far as the 
the time and where the bar lines are. We had talked about that before, so we'll get to that. But for now, just looking at the uh, harmony. Okay, what do you think? <laughs> I think the harmony emphasizes like the peaceful sound of the song. Um, to me, it like it reminds me of like a river. <laughs> Dang. It's pretty. One thing I love about rivers, they're peaceful, but they're strong, right? I mean, a river can be many different things, right? And so the idea of run, moving on, I do get that feeling most of this of, of moving on. Like I said, we'll do a little work on the rhythm, but yeah, I hear that uh, in the harmony. Um, so what I wanted to point out, and uh, let's see, maybe you can at least wave um, your, oh, uh, go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, she can't even hear us anymore, according to the chat, so just, Oh, no. Oh, here we go. Maybe. Okay. So I was checking. Okay, so can you hear us now, Sister Uriel? Can you hear us? Okay, that's okay. A, that's a start. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead, forgive us that, that we can't hear you, but um, <clears throat> let me just, first of all, let me say this. Everybody that's turning in the homework now, is now writing in harmony it's amazing so it's like something that we weren't able to do just a little while ago is totally done i mean i love it <laughs> so um that's just real exciting to me that everybody has basically turned in harmony that has the chords mapped out um as we learned and so we are taking the steps really good i'm excited about it so what I wanted to point out is some of the things that you might not notice um, if you play it back on um, on MuseScore. And one thing about MuseScore, I think I've mentioned this, the internet is talking about it all over the place because MuseScore has such great sounds. And of course, kind of hard to get a realistic singing sound if you're not using words, but it sounds nice, right? I mean, this little chorus sounds nice. <laughs> The sound sounds nice, right? So I, I, I really enjoy that. That that excites us. It excites me to hear it like, wow. And remember, that was a big difference between just a melody and then the bass and now harmony. Beautiful. So one of the things about that sound, though, is um, you may not notice some of the things that you would notice if you heard people actually singing it, OK? And we spent a lot of time when we did the bass uh, I'm sorry, on the melody, on getting it to be natural. With my song, I praise him. My heart leaps for joy when I trust him. And, and I suggested you sing it over and over again. That'll get you used to writing something natural. And that's what everybody did. We still have a little to work on melodies, but they all came out really nice. So I want to point out something here. Uh, the beginning... And actually all the way through your harmony as far as getting the notes in each chord are great so you obviously understood what we're doing this is everybody else let's see if you can catch up to what she did what chord do we have right here one one what chord do we have right here five that's a five so let's let's pull out our our uh, memorization here, right? Five is, gotta memorize these. One, don't be so. Five, I'm sorry, four is falado. And five is soti re, and sometimes, if we're gonna put the seventh on it, what is it? Soti re fa. So let's look back here, what we have is, so, T, Re, Fa, right? 
So this is a complete 5-7 chord here, all the way. And then what do we have here? That's a 1. Mm -hmm. Do me so. What's this one? 5. Uh, let's look carefully. Oh, no, 4. <laughs> there it is, 4. That's the falado, right? That's the 4? Okay, what is this one? One. One. What is this one? One. One. Okay, good. Movement one. All right. And so, um, yeah, I'll get into some picky stuff later. Um, later, we're going to talk about contrary motion, where we prefer not to all move in the same direction, but it's still very nice. This is one to one. Okay, what's this one? Should recognize it now. That's the five again, right? Okay, so all the chords, very nicely spelled. That's why it sounds so nice. All the thirds are there that we're looking for to give this beautiful sound. So next, what we're going to start talking about bit by bit, so that's what I mean, getting picky, getting more advanced, is um, how to handle each voice. So right here, with my song, or actually as it's written out, with my song, right? This is a really short note. With my song, I praise him. And my suggestion is to have it all eighth notes. With my song. But this isn't bad either. With my song. Here's what happens in the bass. With my song. Okay? And we can all hear it right away, right? There's a little issue with that. Even though the, um, the harmony is perfect, right? What's it going to sound like when a person actually sings that? With my song, right? And that's, that's what it's going to come out sounding like. And it's going to sound a little funny. And so one of the things we're going to learn how to do today is um, sometimes we want to move around a little bit, but still keep the same sound uh, of a chord, uh, as in maybe I would want to just keep one note here in the bass instead of moving around and there's ways that we can move the melody without moving the bass too much and so this is a natural step with what our homework was our homework was to put everything on a chord right and that's good it sounded good but then as far as what's natural sometimes we're going to not want to do that and i will show you what we mean here let's see Seems like I was going to get back to Brother Ben's song, but I didn't. I'm sorry, there was one other reason, but we'll get back to it again or soon the next time. Uh, but uh, I'm going to go find my ride, Brother Duncan. All right. Okay. So good I'll catch you all later. God bless you, brother, and I'll send you the recording, and we'll see you in person. Okay, thank you. Tell them hi. All right. Yay. All righty. So let's pull out... Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Can mm -hmm. I say something? Uh, when you were talking about how listening to the other voices, I actually found a really cool um, tool on MuseScore mm -hmm. where you can turn off some of the voices. So then you can just like listen to the bass or the tenor or whatever. And that right. really helped me when I was putting together my harmony to try to avoid the things that sound weird. Excellent. So is it like a mixer or something? I think I've seen it. Yeah, uh huh. So it looks like on Muse Score Four, it's right under Uriel's name on the very top where you are. There's a thing oh, that goes. Oh, um, mixer. Yeah. Yep, mixer. Uh -huh. All right. Mm -hmm. And here's the big issue. We'll find out in just a second. And it sounds like, from what you said, forgive me, I'm moving uh, Zoom things out of the way here so I can see yeah, that. Yeah. Um. So the interesting thing is, it looks like you can only turn down one staff or the other, right? So let me see. What this, yeah, let me see what this sounds like. So now we're only hearing the top staff, like it says. I mean, the bottom staff, the min, right? We're hearing now the bass and tenor. Now all four. Now if I bring this down. Now we have only the women, right? 
I'm only hearing the, the higher voices, the top staff. Okay. So yeah, already that's that's probably helpful. So is that what you did? Yeah. Mm hmm Yep, that's what I did. And I actually have an earlier version of Muse score. And for some reason, yeah, you can turn off individual parts in the earlier version. So so yeah, the individual parts you have to tell the computer what they are. And that's the trick. So Yeah, they have they have bars. They have a on this old older software they have soprano alto tenor bass so we have that too so oh, cool. <laughs> yeah so let's let's start a new uh project and this is something you can do if you want why are you taking so long there we go okay so when we started this um we go to coral right and what um, you're talking about is SATB. What does SATB stand for? Soprano, Soprano alto, tenor bass. Tenor bass. Bass, right? So if I, and it already shows you what it's going to look like. And yes, we're going to have the four different voices. So if I click on this and start one, yes, I'm going to have soprano, alto, tenor, and bass. And if I throw some notes on here, let's throw something horrible. <laughs> Probably not going to sound good. Um, and I go to my mixer. Now I have control over each voice, soprano, alto, tenor, and bass. Does that make sense? Okay. The main reason that we didn't do that is because I want you to see it like you do in a songbook. Okay, and um, there's even some small issues such as um, you see the tenor here. You see, okay, so soprano is treble clef, alto is treble clef, tenor. This is a specialized tenor. It's in treble clef, and that little eight means you sing it an octave lower. You see this in a lot of men's music like like uh, I sing a lot of barbershop, and if you see, sometimes even in the book, they'll have like, I call it a, a men's quartet. It was originally written. And so you'll see the basses down here, but then the higher men's voices was something like this. Uh, and so basically it's not what we see in the songbook, right? Uh, about the only time, I think we mentioned it, maybe the only time you'd see something like this in the songbook is something like uh, The Greatest Commands. How many of you know that song, right? So for the greatest commands, they have it laid out that way, soprano, alto, tenor, bass. So the way I would throw this out there is this is a tool, but might be a little tricky to use. Okay, so, but that's an excellent discovery that you were able to, to hear each line. So if you use it, just remember it's a tool and it's not going to look exactly the way it will when you get it ready for what we would put in a songbook. So either way, just throwing it out there, these are a lot of possibilities. I think it would still be useful to you if you wanted to like only listen to just the women or just the men. It does help you zero in on what the voices sound like. Uh, and then we could, you know, um, later on we can talk about how to hear each voice separately. So um, going back to this, we got that right with my song, right? It's it's musically. It's not bad as far as the chord, but it could be smoother. And so that's what we're going to start talking about as well, how to make things smooth, how to smooth everything out so that it, it all runs like a river, <laughs> so that it's uh, natural all the way across. So let me um, pull this one out and we'll start forming some chords. Uh -huh. Let's see, how will I do this? Let me start with a half note. So um, in the bass, what do we have in the bass there? Do. Do. All right, that should already give us a hint. What chord are we going to be working with? One. All right, a one. And for ease, I'm going to write all three notes 
the rest notes up here. We'd actually have the one in the tenor, but just so we can see it, I'm gonna write it up there. Okay, so what chord are we working with here? What chord is this? It's a one, all the way, right? You know what? I'm changing my mind. I, I want to get used to the way it would look in a songbook, so let's just go ahead and do it that way, right? But it's still a one chord, right? Now, <clears throat> first of all, let's get a little background. Mm. Yeah, I'll just use the word first, and then we'll look at the vocabulary idea. We want to look for something called common tones. And common tones is just what it sounds like between two chords what do they have in common so if you look at the one and the four what note do they have in common do do right that's the only one that you see on both of those right they both have do so what that means for us is i can keep do in the bass I can even keep Do here, but I can change up here to a four chord. So let's look, let's look at that four chord. Um, what's the four chord? A la Do. A la Do, okay. And I've already got Do, right? So let's, let's start looking at our very top note, soprano. Where would we take the So? Where do you think we'd take it? If I'm gonna move to a fa la do now, where, so I gotta put in fa la here somewhere, which I've got a soprano note. Where would the soprano note go next? Probably up to la. Yeah, so this is where we start doing that puzzle piece thing. I start thinking. Now, let me just tell you real quick. If I were to go down to fa, then where would this alto have to go down to? Like way down to la. Fa la da, yeah, fa, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, that's that's awkward. Okay, we can tell by looking at it. Uh, so instead, you're starting to do this puzzle piece thing. If I'm gonna have a, a fa and a la here, the soprano's the one that I want to go up to la, right? And then this one here uh, will go up to Fa, and I just went from one to four. Can everybody see that? Okay. Um, but I kept the bass the same. And this is a trick to, to, usually what happens once I do this, after I do that, then I'm gonna come back here. I'm right back to the same place that I was. So let me uh, play that really quick. Okay. And also really quick, let me show you what it would be like if I completely change to the four. Okay, I'm gonna change completely to the four here. I'll go all the way down here. That's a fa, right? I use the bass to go down to the four. Let's hear what that sounds like. Complete change of chord, right? And there are times when that's exactly what you want. That can be a very nice sound. But then this one. The bass is the same all the way through, right? So I have a little change up here right kind of going somewhere but coming back and i get the feeling that i'm just playing with the one that's kind of what i want you to get used to okay and this is great for things like we'll just see it in in your uh, example in just a minute this is great for things where you're moving kind of fast and you don't want to like blah, 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 blah. you don't want a quick change of the whole chord this gives you the feel like i'm still in one but everything's smooth now, notice, uh, let's talk about intervals. What intervals do we have here? Remember what interval this would be? Three and five. So if we started with the root, right, this is the root, that's the third and the fifth, we would call that. By interval, though, I mean just what's the distance between these two notes? 
It's not a unison. Third. It's a third. That's right. It's a third. Not a unison. Not a second. It's a third. So remember, we said the third is that note that pretty much all harmony is based on. And so when I move from here to here, I moved in what we call parallel thirds. This is a third, and you can you tell that this is a third? Okay, and, and that's a third there. One of the easiest ways to recognize thirds, uh, let me just throw something down here real quick, is if one of them is on a line, then the next one will be on the next line. It's always going to be line, line. If one of them is on a space, then the next one will be on a space. Oops. And let me go back there. So do you see, this is called parallel thirds. This is called moving up by step. So if you notice, do you see that I'm moving up? Do, at the bottom note is do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Can everybody see that? Okay, so let's start here. Let's start right here and just listen to these parallel thirds. Okay, so we're moving in thirds, and I could do the same thing backwards, right? If I were to turn this backwards, I'm not going to write it all out, but can you see it could go just as easily backwards, work the same way, all right? Um, let me draw something else really quick and see if you can tell me what this is. What do we have going on here? What are these? Octaves. Octaves, right. How can you tell they're octaves? Because they're the same note. Right. Okay, so let's get the sound there. What's the sound of the octaves? Okay, so what sound do we have there, the octaves? We gave it a sound. Even though it's not unison, remember we say it sounds like you're singing unison because you have all the same notes, all right? One last one. Let's listen to an unusual one here. And a little math problem. You can tell me if you... Uh, if you get what it is. Let's just listen to these. Oh, let's make it go all the way up. All right, let's listen to what this sounds. Can anybody tell me what this is going to be? What are these? These are fifths, right? So let's listen to it. What do the fifth sound like to you? I don't know. They sound sort of like the minor chords of not minor chords. Sort of, huh? They're more emotional, I guess. And when we get to this one, it comes out, there's a slight difference in them. But, but these, moving in order like that, um, 
it either sounds really old or really new because it's not in most of our traditional Western harmony. Just as an example, um, <clears throat> uh, in uh, a lot of movies, this is a, what do you call it, a stereotype, which is actually not always really accurate, but um, for uh, almost any, um, like when it's supposed to be Chinese or Native American or whatever, you might hear something like this. Uh, let's just hear that first. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> and it's it's often like not very very well done because it doesn't really necessarily reflect what the native music would really sound like. But what it's telling you is this is not the usual music. It's something different. Um, and this is what harmony used to be based around. But what's missing? What's missing right there in the middle when you have a fifth? What's missing? The third. A third, right? That's what's missing. Now let me throw that third in there really quick. Oh, that's not a third. And let's listen to what it sounds like. Matter of fact, let me even throw it in here. I actually like this sound. <laughs> but let's see what it sounds like to you. I actually like that sound. Um, what does it sound like to you? Our chords are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, it is. When we play them in that order, what kind of music does it sound like? First of all, does it sound like an acapella hymn? Does it sound like the kind you're used to hearing? Maybe that's the best way to put it. <laughs> And um, probably not. Uh, this is not the harmony that we have in most of our songbooks. And that does not mean at all that it's not good harmony. Uh, like, depending on where you go, I've been in some places where we sing a lot like this. <laughs> and sometimes it's like we're all just making it up as we go, and it comes out a lot like this. But what I just want to let you know is that as we're learning the traditional kind of harmony, um, Western music, it would be called, we avoid these fifths. Because whenever I have these fifths going in order, it takes me away from the traditional harmony that will take me to the five one and all that kind of stuff. Okay. So um, you will hear people say, people who have studied music, no parallel fifths. They just keep saying that over and over again. And what does the Bible say about it? How evil are par parallel fifths according to the Bible? <laughs> Nothing, right? So if you want to write a song with parallel fifths, you go right ahead. In my opinion, sometimes it sounds great. It all depends, right? Um, but let's see. Um, I'm going to bring up some rules. Some rules of moving harmony. Okay, moving harmony from chord to chord. And remember, we're also talking tonight about even trying not to move from chord to chord, just barely move so that we don't notice it, okay? Um, try for contrary motion. If you have a chance, try for contrary motion. So I'm gonna go back to this example up here. You might remember I automatically did something when we changed it to a four. Um, when we changed it to a four chord, I could have done this. I could have done that, and it doesn't sound too bad. I'll put that up there.
actually doesn't sound all that bad. One, four, one. But I didn't do that. Does anybody remember what I did? I did something kind of automatically. You put the file like down an octave. I put the file way down there. And what does that do? By the way, with bases, again, maybe not quickly, ba -ba -bum, but it is okay to jump pretty far with bases. We have to to get to fa. It happens all the time. So what, oops, wrong, come on, go back to there too. There you go. What do we have going on there? Poor sister Uriel, she'll fix her audio soon. She's like, contrary motion. <laughs> I can see it, very good. Yes, so this is what we just talked about. Try for contrary motion, right? So contrary motion. So the soprano's going da da da. So la so. The alto mi fa mi. Then we have a common tone here, right? Do do do. And then do fa. What direction are we moving here? All right, we go down, up, whereas here we go up, down. Can you see how instead of all moving the same direction, we've got some going up and some going down? And this makes it much more interesting, okay? Does that make sense? Okay, we got it. All right, next rule. Avoid parallel octaves. Oh, wait, let me, let me go back to this real quick, sorry. Um, it says at least a common tone. So in this case, when I move just a little bit, and this is probably what we're going to look at after the break, when I move just a little bit, uh, I'm not going to worry about contrary motion. I have this common tone here, and I'm just barely moving, but I have that common tone. That's going to help make things smooth, all right? Avoid parallel octaves. The reason why we avoid parallel octaves, except for what? For unison. The reason we avoid it is if you start having parallel octaves in the middle of four-part harmony, and once again, there's no law against it in the Bible, and as a matter of fact, people do it a lot in music too, but you just have to understand this. As soon as you start using parallel octaves, we start hearing that unison. We start hearing that as the main like thing and you stop getting that feeling of of four part harmony so that's why we avoid it if you're trying to have four part harmony you want to avoid the parallel octaves right away it'll jump out on you like that's what you hear and it doesn't mix as well with the the four part and fine and then finally the other one to avoid avoid parallel fifths and so we talked about it, right? Why do we avoid the parallel fifths? And again, if you want to write them, it's fine. But we just have to understand that it's a different style. If you have the parallel fifths, immediately it takes us out of um, the, the uh, style that, that we're working in. So that's okay if you want to. But you do need to understand that it will, especially it will stand out if you suddenly write that in and it's in a different style from everything else we're writing. Um, mm -hmm. So are the, can you go back to where you wrote the parallel fifths, please? Mm -hmm. Sure. So remember, first of all, we listen to the fifths by themselves. Mm -hmm. And then we added the third, but you still kind of hear those parallel fifths happening even when you put the okay. in between. How much contrary motion is going on here? None. Absolutely none. The fancy word for it is, is planar, planing. It's all going, you wanna get into fancy classical stuff. It was Debussy who got back into this and said, hey, let's do it, why not? It sounds beautiful. But it, <laughs> it, it is a different style. Uh, and then if you wanna go way back, um, there was something called organum. Um, and again, unfortunately, a lot of it's Catholic because that's what's left over, you know, mm -hmm. but if you listen to, uh, a Catholic chant, right. 
-hmm. By the way, some of it's beautiful. Some of it does not have anything anti-biblical in the word. So, you know, depending, I think some of it is fine. Um, but they would just have a melody, da 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 right? No, even no time. Have you heard that before? That kind of singing? Uh -huh. And then the, as harmony developed, the next thing they did was somebody else would sing the fifths above it. And it would just go up and down exactly like that. That was kind of the beginning of written out harmony. Because before that, we don't know. Because again, we don't have the Apostles' Greatest Hits and it wasn't written out. <laughs> so we don't know. But um, written out, it used to be like that. And then, uh, so I'm getting fancy into the classical stuff, but that's where this is stuff is based on. And then things develop in the Renaissance period. And then when you get to the Baroque period, it's called Bach is basically the one that really kind of put it into a system, uh, not even trying to, he just did. He put it into a system. And today, if you recognize a whole bunch of things going on, you know, five, seven, one, all this stuff. Um, it's it's kind of a system that we've had for a long, long time. And in a way that helps because we recognize it and we're able to sing it easily. I don't know if that was a long answer to your question. Or did you have another yes, question? Yes, it was. You wanted to hear no, it again. No, but... <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, sometimes I try not to answer too long, but sometimes, hey. <laughs> <laughs> that's just to give you all if you're, if you're interested in looking up some things you know and listening to some things there are some things that that you can listen to all right so that is why we avoid parallel fifths but if you want to do a parallel fifth it's just fine so like for example a lot of so-called gospel or spiritual music throw some more uh fifths in there um just depends on the kind of style but if you want to write the kind of style we are, you would avoid the parallel fifths. But avoid, obviously, doesn't mean never. So we'll talk about that, OK? Finally, when you move up or down by steps in order, do, re, mi, fa, right? We already said, what is the best way to do it? What do we use? Somebody say it. I think Mr. Uriel's trying to say it. Come on, somebody say it. For parallel me. thirds. Right, okay. Use parallel thirds. So let's go back and listen to those parallel thirds again. Beautiful parallel thirds. Make sense to us. And again, you can always recognize it because... You see line, line, space, space, line, line, space, space. Those are the, the parallel thirds, okay? So that was a lot of theory tonight, but it will tell you some things to watch out for in your writing. Let's just go back to that. And we also have the reason why. And when we come back, we're going to do what I promised, uh, ways to, to move without moving very much, with keeping the bass on the same note. But when you move harmony, you're trying for contrary motion somewhere in there. If you can avoid it, you don't wanna have everything move the same way. It makes it more interesting. And we get rid of this if we have contrary motion or at least a common tone, right? Avoid the parallel octaves. What happens when we hear parallel octaves in the middle of four part harmony? Your ear says, that's that's unison yeah it stands out and usually when we're working for four-part harmony we want only the melody to stand out and everything else to blend in um avoid parallel fifths it will give us a different sound and so because of that the way to move up in harmony if i'm moving one thing and i want to move the other thirds is the way to go thirds 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 okay a lot of theory uh, when we get back, we'll try and put some of it right into some some songs. So any last minute questions before we have our break? All right, let's be back in about 10, 10, 12 minutes at 15. See you in a bit. <laughs> 